Hello everybody, this is Yoko's Anime Reactions and I'm going to try and make this brief because I am going to use today to focus on getting reviews out. I hope. I'm saying I hope because my nephew is deciding to be a little bad boy today. And if you end up hearing screaming, most likely it's him. He's not doing it at the moment because nobody's bothering him, but... The reason he'd be screaming is because I tell him, yeah, you don't clean up, you're not getting a reward. And he'd scream. Essentially just, a, you know, like an ah, scream really loud, essentially. That's what he'd do, every time. And I'm sick and tired of hearing that scream. He does it again, I'm going to spank him and take away the remote. And this all started because he wanted to eat cereal with milk in his room and I told him no. Because we don't want him to make a mess, obviously. All I wanted was for him to eat his cereal in the kitchen. No, he didn't want to listen. At least Wyatt, who is my younger nephew, is actually listening. I asked him to please clean up the room, the living room, because there was toys and stuff on the floor. And he's listening. As far as I think, so, I think he is listening, because I hear him putting stuff in a bucket. His Easter basket, I mean, not bucket. Anyway, I better get this done quick. I say I'm going to get it done quick, and then I end up talking for... About two minutes. <laughs> About nothing. Anyway, this is going to be my review for Dr. Stone episodes uh, 7, 8, and 9, I think. Well, uh, Kohaku and Dr. Stone, and not just, blah, 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 blah. Kohaku and Senku meet, and they end up, she ends up, in, uh, they end up heading back to the hot springs so she can get some water for her sister who is sick. And obviously without modern medicine, they have no idea what she's got, if it's curable, if it's even got a treatment. Because for all we know, she could have lung cancer. And if that was the case, there'd be nothing they could do. Not even science could help her. Because they don't have access to stuff like chemotherapy. That's way out of their league at this point. Anyway, they get to her village, and uh, at first I thought it was people, descendants of people who had been released from the stone first, because obviously I'm assuming, I had assumed at first that Senku was the first person to come out of the stone. He might have been. <sighs> Why? I can never get to do what I want to do. Can't wipe his freaking butt on him by himself. No, actually, he can't. Anyway, like I thought, they were descendants of people who had come out of the stone first. You know the uh, I think how Senku put it, like the first generation or something of people who were unpetrified. And no, he thought they were people who were unpetrified essentially at first but no they are not they are descendants at first I thought they were descendants of uh, people who were unpetrified that's why I thought because a ton of them have blonde hair and the other half uh, obviously we can't tell with the elderly because their hair because you know hair, their hair changed colors but it's either they have bl they have blonde hair or they have brown hair or white wait a couple of them have white hair knowing what i know now uh, <laughs> it's getting odd anyway But yeah, some of them have weird combinations like 
the one with the white hair, like I mentioned, he has his hair itself is white. His eyebrows and his facial hair are brown, though. How does that even work? How is that possible? Because usually all your hair would grow out the same color. Usually. Can somebody tell me if there's any instances where I am wrong in real life? Because anime is anime. It can do whatever it freaking wants. It can have rainbow hair for all I care and say. It doesn't, it doesn't bother me at all. But real life hair. It usually all grows out the same color. So is there an instance of that happening in real life? I know there's a like dirty blonde hair that's natural, which is uh, brown and blonde mixed together, but that's mixed together. Whatever his name was, I can't remember, one of the ones that guards the priestess, uh, he had all his hair, his head hair, is white. Not white mixed with brown, or brown mixed with white. It is completely white, and his ha facial hair is completely brown. So, that doesn't really make any sense. They have no access to dyes, as far as I know, so they don't know how to do that. Actually, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Um, anyway, they won't let Senku into the village because he is an outsider, and they claim that all outsiders are people who uh, are criminals and people they have banished. How many people were there before they all got banished? Because I know there's at least, like, not counting the elderly and the children, there's 40 of them. So, that's a very small number, but considering, uh, how many survivors there were, uh, and it makes sense. And it's kind of creepy that this is just inbreeding, essentially, the entire time. Anyway, uh, the two guards are brothers. I do wonder something. I guess it's kind of would make sense to be like a recessive gene in one of the survivors for green eyes. Because, as far as I know, did the guy have green eyes? I couldn't tell because the stupid eyebrows were in the way. The Russian guy, German guy, whatever the heck, the Russian guy. I couldn't tell what his eye color was. But none of them had green eyes. Closest thing to green eyes was Lillian's blue eyes. And like I said, I know I'm getting really ahead of myself, but this is just kind of bugging me. I'm guessing the green eyes are a sesame gene. I told you, wait. Go in the living room and wait, okay? Just go watch TV until I get done. I'll come in there when I'm done. I'm trying to avoid him being on camera because obviously the COPA thing is still in effect. And I don't want my comments turned off. Oh, please don't come in here and bother me, please. Anyway, they get cro- uh, Senku grabs some of the, the hot spring water and makes bubbles with it using just his hand and some puff, a puff of air. And obviously they are freaking out because they have never seen bubbles before. They think it's sorcery. Which means that uh, they don't have uh, science knowledge. They are not unpetrified people. Because anybody who is an unpetrified person would have knowledge of the modern world. So they would not be surprised if they had signed bubbles. Anyway, Ginro decides to go and get Chrome. And uh, Chrome is acting like he is a big badass of the, of the village. Claiming that he is a sorcerer. And all he shows Senku is, like, probably basic knowledge of math. And that kicks, kicks his ass in all of this. Basic knowledge of static electricity. Though he doesn't know it is static electricity, obviously. He just knows it is sorcery, obviously. And fire flame color change tests. It's a flame test, essentially. Where he takes certain crystals or certain minerals, tosses them in the fire, and the flame changes colors. And Senku explains all of this. It's very, like... I guess you could say elementary. But then again, uh, because he lost, Senku now has access to Chrome's little shed that has all his uh, his uh, collected minerals and everything. 
And Sex is kind of freaking out because, uh, yeah, he has all sorts of different minerals in there that can be used. And they actually end up becoming good friends because they both, you know, like science. Although Senku has to explain to him that it's not sorcery, it's science. And later on, he ends up telling Chrome what happened to the world. Like, what happened, you know, with the petrification, all the time had passed and everything, all the knowledge and everything was supposedly lost. And obviously Chrome is upset because, you know, all that stuff, all that amazing stuff is gone. And uh, Senku was telling him about all that, that he can, they can try and recreate everything using the information that he has in his head. And, uh, yeah, Rui is sick. It looks like she's got a cough that is very debilitating to her. So, it could be just as process of elimination. It could be tuberculosis, it could be pneumonia, it could be bronchitis for all I know. Though with bronchitis, you cough up mucus. And we haven't seen her do that, we just start seeing her cough and sometimes cough up blood, so it's definitely not that. So, the, and... A worst case scenario, lung cancer. That would be the worst case scenario. And Chrome asked him, is it possible to cure Rui? And this gets Senku very excited because now they are going to try and make antibiotics. Okay, when I was actually watching this, I was like, oh, so they're going to make penicillin because that's the only antibiotic I know of that you could easily get. E easily get. In comparison to everything else, antibiotic-wise. Because penicillin essentially is a, is a certain kind of green mold. And next episode, someone Senku actually mentions this, but essentially it's like a game of... Like a waiting game and a very strong luck chance to get the right strain of penicillin. And even then, uh, it's not very likely and it's probably hard. I'm guessing it's hard to synthesize into a drug... In the first place, so they are going the sulfa drug route. And they make a little roadmap thing to get to their goal of, you know, the sulfa drugs. And they obviously start making everything. And considering that it's primitive and everything, he has to be... He has to essentially make it like the iron from scratch, in a way. Later... They end up, he was showing them the night sky and everything, and he pointed out that the North Star is always pointing true north. And Kohaku mentions, it kind of looks a little off from true north. And of course, you would think, oh, it's, that can't be right, because you know, usually the North Star is always true north, no matter what. And then Senku realizes that the Earth's axis is tilting. It has tilted over these 3,700 years, and that's not only... That's not only that's the reason why the Dwarf Star is not true north anymore, and why his little sextant thing didn't work. Because the Earth's axis is tilted. That's why it didn't work. And Chrome ends up showing him a magnet that he found on the mountain, though he doesn't know it as a magnet, he just knows it as a rock that he put on a leaf in a bucket, and it always ends up showing true north. That's a magnet. That's essentially what a compass is. It's a piece of it's a piece of plastic and everything with metal in it that will always point true north. And uh, Senku gets the idea to use the magnets that they have to try and gather as much iron sand in the river as possible. And this is actually where we get introduced to Suika, who is an adorable little girl. Who wears a watermelon as a little ha as a little mask thing? And the reason why, we find out later. But she doesn't want people to see her face, but she wants to help and be useful because no one else thinks she's useful in the village. So she offers to help, and Senku doesn't even question the mask thing. Though I'm sure he's probably eager to see what's under that mask, because, you know, na natural curiosity will get to him. But for the time being... They gather as much iron sand as they can, and he ends up building a clay furnace. The problem 
is that they need to get the furnace to like, what was it, 1500 degrees to melt the iron sand into iron. And uh, with that modern technology, that is a very hard feat to do. And they use air blower things, and oh my god, they work themselves to the bone, and I don't even think they get it that high. So, because they need more manpower, uh, Senko gets the idea to use food to entice some of the villagers, because Suiko went on a little detective mission and found out that some of them, that one of them, uh, wants to change the pace from fish all the time, and I kind of don't blame him and all that, because... Eating the same thing every day can get to where you hate the hate the the food item you're eating. I mean, let's say for example, I eat pizza every day for six months. Nothing changes. Pizza all the time. I'd probably get sick of it. And not want to eat it anymore. Huh. That'd probably be a good way for my mom to try and get me off pizza. <laughs> At making me sick of it. But, yeah, that that's essentially what's going on here. And uh, Senku gets the idea to make something from his time that everybody could eat. And at first, when they made the flour, I thought they were going to make bread or something. Some kind of bread, some kind of pastry, something like that. Oh, no. They made ramen. They made foxtail millet ramen. And, uh... Obviously, they all think it's, like, essentially the food of the gods. Senku, however, used to regular ramen. It doesn't taste that good to him. Well, the noodles don't, anyway. I don't know about the rest of it, but the noodles don't taste good, good to him because it's not regular flour they used. Then again, you work with what you got. And they end up enticing the rest of the village to come and try it as they make multiple batches of it. And everybody's loved it. They even try to get Ginro and Kinro to eat some, and Kinro's like, the rules are the rules, I'm not accepting this. And yet, you accepted the freaking gold tip spear that you got. Freaking hypocrite on that one. But, yeah. It, yeah, he's definitely a hypocrite on that, because he says he shouldn't accept gifts. And then Gin and then Ginro said, well, why don't we trade spears then if you don't accept gifts? Because the gold tip spear was a gift from them. And he's like, no deal. And I'm like, freaking hypocrite right there. You kind of contradicted your own dang statement. Anyway, uh, they end up uh, getting an unexpected guest. By way of a man named Gen. Who was brought back from the petrification by Sukasa. And we learn from Gen that he's been building a bit of an army. And he's gathered a ton of statues that he's revived. So he's worked out the formula for the revival fluid now. Which is not good. It makes me wonder. They've been down in caves before. Or they're going to end up being in caves in future episodes. So why don't why aren't bats in there? You would think there would be bat, some bats in there that can catch some bat guano. I don't know. Maybe they need one that's full of bats. I don't know. No, no, go. Go, 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 go. Let me finish. Sorry, he asked if I was done yet. I was like, no, I'm not done yet. Anyway, uh... But yeah, we find out that Tsukasa sent Gen to make sure that Senku is really dead. Because I'm guessing he doesn't trust that the guy isn't dead. Now, Gen is a mentalist. Essentially, everything he says... Could be... As Kohaku puts it... Flowery fluff... To where you don't really, you can't really trust the thing he says, essentially. Unless you get, you know, you gain his trust. In which case, he will be straightforward with you. But, yeah. He could easily send a false report back to Tsukasa saying that Senku is dead and that all he found was a primitive village. <coughs> anyway... Uh, because everybody ate the ramen, now Senku has them, you know, doing the air, uh, using the air pumps to try and fan the furnace to where, to get it to where they need to go, because they don't have, they didn't have the manpower at first, but now they do. And because of that, they now have iron. Now, what else did they do next? Oh, uh, 
shoot. Oh, they make an iron bar. Or, I could say two iron bars. And they end up get, taking one of the planks off the bridge because they need to make... They grind up some... Uh, they melt up some copper and they make copper wiring that they wrap around the iron bar because they want to make a magnet for their generator. And again, is obviously very skeptical at this because... You're going to make a generator in the stone world where there's no technology, nothing? Yeah, I believe it when I see it, to be completely honest. That's how skeptical how skeptical I could be on this. And he was asking him, what kind of generator are you going to make? Are you going to make a hydroelectric? Are you going to make a wind one? Don't tell me you're going to go nuclear already. No, he said manpower. Of course. But yeah, they head up to the top of the mountain where uh, Chrome found the magnet before. And because, you know, there was going to be, there was a storm coming. And they have to ground the iron bar so that way it'll stand up and catch the lightning. And then Kohaku grabs Kinro's gold tip spear, ties the iron bar to it, plunges it into the rock of the mountain, and gets away right as the lightning hits it. And the lightning destroys that spear. And I'm like, oh my god, well, you can't be a hypocrite anymore on that. You didn't, ex you can't accept the gift, so the gift got taken away. So now they have a magnet. A very strong magnet, apparently. So, uh, yeah. Obviously, Senku has to explain, you know, the polarity thing, because at first Kohaku thinks that it didn't work, because, you know, the, the poles don't go to each other like they're supposed to. He turns it around, and then boop! And, uh, what else do they do? Uh, they make a generator that they get Kinro and Ginro to man. I don't know how they got managed to do that. But they managed to get them to work it. And they use the iron bar, the copper wiring, everything they have made so far. Along with a little piece of steam ro- what would he say? A steam roasted bamboo strip? And he grabs the tips where the from the generator. And they go up to the top of the thing at night. And he- touches it with them and he makes a light bulb if it and not a traditional light bulb that we know but essentially a light bulb and this is what I think sways Gen to stake you know join their side because all he was gonna do was join the side that he thought was gonna win essentially so yep Oh, uh, Gen kind of proved a little bit of his loyalty by keeping Magma and his little cronies from trying to cause trouble for them when they were trying to get everything taken care of before all this by using his illusions, essentially a fla a trick of flowers where he makes them disappear, essentially like that. Oh, they're hiding behind his hand. That's how the trick works. Anyway... But yeah, I think this is what gets Gen. But yeah, they have now have light in a world where natural light is all they would have, which ain't much better than fire. So now, it essentially has proved again that yeah, despite the stone world and our lack of resources, we will make it happen. We will try our damnedest to make it happen, to get everything back to the way it was. Maybe not quite the way it was. Because they'll have to get, you know, scientists and everything back that were actually proficient in their fields to do all that. But they will do it. They will <laughs> put all their blood, sweat, and tears in doing this. Anyway, but yeah, I am not a science person, but I love this show. And I cannot wait for the episode 6. Because, yeah, it kind of ended on a bit of a cliffhanger as to what could possibly happen. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time.